so they can say what they want. I have a hard time doing it to them mm -hmm. because I'm basically, you know, I'm basically a truthful person. But, and, <laughs> and frankly, no. <laughs> did he just laugh at Trump saying, I'm a truthful person? <laughs> you know how we watched Call Her Daddy the other day with Kamala Harris talking about abortion. Now let's go to Flagrant with Andrew Schultz talking to Trump about abortion. So Trump was on Flagrant, which is just so flagrant in so many ways. Look at him. What a flagrant man he is. But I thought instead of watching the whole thing, we would just get to the section that I think kind of ref is the same section that Kamala Harris, like we reviewed from her, just because if you haven't voted yet, you can have a chance to see how both candidates talk about abortion, but mostly because like bodily agency is on the line this election from LGBT rights to abortion rights. And so I want you to hear how both people talk about it. Kamala focusing on women's agency and women's ability to choose for themselves, regardless of what the government thinks they should do with their bodies. That is her platform. Let's listen to Trump talk about his. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, so tell really? me this. So tell me this, this, this situation. Okay. Um, Barron is 18. He's yeah. handsome. He's yeah. tall. Yeah. He's rich. He's got the whole ball. Game, he's that unleashed in New York City. That's... Are you sure you want to reverse Roe v. Wade now? <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy joke. That's a crazy joke. <laughs> I mean, maybe yeah. give him a few years, you know. Well, you know, his... it's up to the states now. It's up to the states. Ooh, it's up to the states. You know what else we should bring back and make it up to the states? Slavery. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? I've heard this argument before. States' rights. Maybe there are certain things that shouldn't be left up to the states. You know, maybe when it comes to bodily agency. You know, maybe when it comes down to, like, what you can do with your own body. Mm, maybe we don't leave that one up to the states. It's because yeah. I have, and I believe in exceptions and all of the different yes. things. I was, You've been vocal about that. I've been very Would vocal. Would you try no, to influence? I, mean, I, I, think, I think a lot of people agree with me. Yeah. You know, it was... Very, very strong, very, very tough. And Republicans were going to lose a lot of elections having to do with a lot of other things, too, because there are many issues. We have the border. We have yeah. this. We have wars. We have everything. Yeah. Uh, and Roe v. Wade was always about getting it back to the states. Yeah. And then people started talking about the number of weeks and this, that, all these. But nobody wanted, no legal scholar, no Democrat, no Republican, liberal, mm. conservative. Nobody wanted it in the federal government. It shouldn't be in is he talking about what i did not pre-watch this i haven't watched any of it i just saw some clips on tiktok like who what since when in the federal government and the legal scholars it was abhorrent they didn't want it and they didn't want it in the federal government now nah. you know what's amazing about abortion is if you don't want one you don't have to have one you've heard that before right interestingly enough uh, many of the women getting abortions identify as Christian. Not surprising, because the truth is, is that many of the women who get abortions in this country, many of the men that ask their partners to get abortions in this country are conservative people. And that will always be the irony of it all, is they think this is some liberal position, that this is some progressive position. This is a universal opinion that many women want the right to do with their body what they feel is necessary. And lots of men would like the women in their lives or the people who are giving birth in their lives to have the ability to seek out medical care when needed. And so it's, you know, sort of ironic to me that he's saying that nobody wanted it to be like federally legalized. They wanted it to be a state's rights issue. Who's who, who, who? Because even conservatives don't want it to be a state's right issue. They want it illegal across every state in America. Those true pro-lifers, the hardcore pro-lifers, they're not interested in state's rights. That's just the beginning. If it was up to them, they would make it illegal, period, from state to state, coast to coast. Good point. Chat says this is why women are leaving Christianity in droves. And this is why the future is female, is woman, is femme, is queer, is gender non-descript, like non-specific. I think the future is, even for a lot of these men who are in denial of it, I think we're done and tired of being boxed into expectations that aren't serving our communities. And the faster we realize this, I think the faster and quicker we'll have like a better chance at like getting America into a better place. Of course, you know, in some ways that's too much to move too quickly. Like it's a very big ask of the, co the country. But I think I think younger generations of boys have a high probability of being progressive enough to move in a good direction. But it's not going to happen in the next 10 years. And it probably won't happen in 20. But it's happening. It's happening slowly. And I think that's good. But I think it starts with the fact that women are hopefully not going to settle as much into relationships. Watch my review of Love is Blind episode four and a little bit of five that I just put out for members yesterday because settling, it should not be the way of the future. 
but it will continue happening if you're insecure. It will continue to happen if you're not healthy. And it will continue to happen if you start, you know, or well, if you start to believe and then you continue to believe that you are worth the basics. And the basics, that's just what everyone has to do to survive. And I think life should be more than the basics. I really do think life should be so much more than the basics. But it's your life. If you want to be basic, be basic. There's nothing wrong with being simple. But being simple is not being basic. And you got to learn the difference. And it was in the federal government. I know so you said that. Sorry. What we did is, right, what we did is uh, we moved it back to the states and a vote of the people. Mm -hmm. And now they're voting. Ohio voted a very liberal, you know, Ohio. I won Ohio by a lot. But they, they voted and it's up to them. Yeah. Um, okay. I do believe in exceptions. Life of the mother and incest. Right. They blinked out the R word. So incest, life of the mother, R word. Um, that's good. And that's good that Trump said that. I Again, the irony is first, this is a pro-choice man. He's been pro-choice since day one. He's been a long life Democrat, right? What's important is this is going to annoy hardcore Republicans because hardcore like pro-lifers, they don't want exceptions. They want you to die because they think you deserve to be a martyr or it's better to be a martyr. And then they don't care if you were assaulted. They think that baby shouldn't quote be punished because of how it came into the world. But this is why it matters how you or what you believe. Cause if I believed in a God, maybe I'd be pro-life. I mean, I was pro-life for my first presidential election. Right. I think what's important is that we recognize like why we believe in these things. Like I'm pro-choice because I think we're animals evolved on a planet. I really am. I don't think I could ever adhere to a belief of pro-life because pro-life is so specifically like minded. They believe your soul's for Christ. They think your soul's for God. I think that's where pro-life beliefs come from for the most part. I don't think people who are pro-life are, they're either not totally educated on how a baby comes into the universe or they're in denial of the fact that like, as much as we want to pretend we're not playing God, we absolutely are playing with people's lives every day. And maybe there's a way to do that in a way that's not the worst thing for society, but actually better for it. Who knows? If your daughter's raped by somebody, and yeah. let's say he's from a prison someplace and yeah. he's killed people and everything yeah. else. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be able to do. Yeah. There's some. Mm, interesting. Interesting the way he phrased it. Let's say it's a criminal. Let's say a criminal leaves a prison and he assaults your daughter. Like you have to be able to do what you got to do. Interesting. People. And I think that group is smaller and smaller when they realize what's going on. But there are some people that uh, under no circumstances yeah. can you do. I don't yeah. happen to agree. Ronald Reagan. Uh, so he's talking to the, the hardcore pro-lifers right there. Reagan didn't agree. But what has happened is it's now back in the states where it belongs. And the states are moving along and they're approving things. Good point, Alice. Interesting wording, even though your daughter is more likely to be by somebody in the family. That's the kind of the irony. But I think maybe in a way he is kind of getting to the pro-lifers a little bit better. Because the truth is, is I think pro-lifers kind of know that. But I think that's the dilemma is like not many of us have like incest stories. I mean, thank goodness. Like. You know, not many of us meet every day a daughter who got impregnated by like a sibling or a father. Like we don't, I don't know anyone who's had that story. And it's obviously a real story, but like, I don't know anyone who's had that story. Thank God. You know, I know of other stories of like assaults happening without impregnation, but I've never met somebody who had like impregnant, like, who got pregnant and had to be, you know, I've never been in that circumstance. So I think because even I have never known anybody and not that I would ever know, because maybe they didn't tell me. It's hard for a pro-lifer to imagine that's even happening at enough like of a rate. And so then they have to come up with the right reasons to have an abortion. And I just saw a TikTok this weekend from a woman who said, I'm a woman who didn't have a, quote, good reason to have an abortion. I just wanted one. And I think that's like a pretty good reason, but only because I believe we're animals on a planet. And not that animal life is invaluable because I think all life is valuable. I think the rock of a plant is valuable. I think the, the rock, like the life that is, you know, naked to the eye is valuable. I think all life is valuable, but I think what's really valuable is wisdom and our ability to make decisions to harm reduce. I think that's what's truly valuable is our ability to make a decision that coincides with our joy and like moves, um, 
moves through like responsibility and wisdom to make a decision that's good for everybody to the best of our ability, right? We're not perfect people. And since so much of like my goal is to get preventative stuff in, in our, that's, I think that's the problem is like, I feel like abortion is so preventable at the rate it is now. It's not completely preventable because sometimes you just have to have an abortion for many reasons, but I think it is so much more preventable than it is now. But pro-life people are just unwilling Conservatives are unwilling to compromise on their religious values and actually give their kids proper sex, like education. I understand contraceptives. I mean, just a reminder that, and this was many, many years ago, but I remember when I told my mom, this is literally like 12, 13 years ago. I told my mom like, oh, I get a Brazilian wax done. And she was like, you get Brazilian waxes done? And she, I was like, yeah. And she goes, don't you want the first person to see you naked to be your husband? And I was like, nobody got time for that. No. <laughs> And that's from a very well-intentioned parent who, you know, who knows how my mom thinks now she's in her sixties, but no, I don't need the first person to see me naked to be my partner. When in reality, my doctor should see me naked. Cause I got to go to the gyno. My uh, waxer should be able to see me naked. Cause you know, this girl got to get rid of this bush, you know, or at least get it trimmed. And then on top of that, you know, you have to think about the relationship you're having with your body where you're keeping it so locked down. You're afraid what to show what, what about nude beaches? What about art pieces? What about the naked bike parade in Seattle or LA? Like there's so many opportunities to be naked in the world and you want to wait till your husband, who's this husband also? Who is she? Who is she really? The whole point is, is that we have these well-intentioned ideas around not wanting an abortion to occur, but we're not willing to have that real conversation that preventative measures are more than accessible and we keep denying them to people. We really do. Honestly, you know how the red pill or the metasphere community will be like, every man should get a vasectomy. Honestly, kind of based, but also I just hope you never procreate. And also too, I think every girl should consider getting an IUD or a, a rod or something, something that's, you know, you don't have to think about something that's in there, something that's like, good for many years, something you don't have to think about, just so you have some agency, especially if you're in a pro-life state. And honestly, if I was you, it would be worth moving or at least being able to travel if possible, have an abortion fund ready to go. Because we're talking about your medical care. Recently, that woman that was in the news who needed a medical like intervention for her, you know, the baby, it wasn't working out, the baby, anyways, she needed an abortion. The facility wouldn't give her the abortion and they told her she could fly out on helicopter, but it'd be like $40,000. So she went to an emergency center down the road and they helped her, but like she was not going to make the drive over. And if she had to drive further than that, the doctor warned her, like, you're not going to make a five hour trip. You're, you're not going to make it. So doctors are more than willing to let their patients die. And that's why it's so ironic that you're pro-life. You're so pro-life. You're willing to let this mother die because you won't give her an abortion. Make it make sense. And this is why I think, honestly, and I mean this with the, the best intentions, I don't think you should be a doctor if you're religious and you're willing to deny care to your patients because of your religion. You should not be able to let your patient die because you won't give them an abortion. I just think that should be absolutely not allowed in any hospital. And I think that we need to get to the point where medical care facilities are safe places for everyone. For everyone, can you imagine being on your deathbed and you think, oh, thank God I found a hospital and the hospital tells you I can't give you the medical care you need? If that, if that woman dies, what do you think happens to the fetus? And that's the irony of these facilities. They're not willing to terminate the pregnancy that's killing this woman. So they'd rather her die. And then of course the baby dies too. It's like harm reduce people, harm reduce. So, some hey, real, some real conservative and some liberal. There's a uh, there's a f there are some places. My wife and I had a baby w w through IVF, mm -hmm. and you've Good. been very supportive of IVF. I was totally. I really love that. You totally said that you guys were going right to pay from for the it, beginning. and I would love. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. I mean, yeah, interesting. Okay, I didn't know that about Andrew and his wife. To get the refund or whatever once that happens, <laughs> yeah. <the> government. <laughs> but um, I actually said. We want babies in our and country. And we do. Yeah. yeah. But so now there I, are some um, people using that reversal of Roe v. Wade to uh, kind of attack the legality of IVF. And to me, it's like, that's heartbreaking. These are crooked politicians. Uh, these are politicians. Now, I'll give you an example. I came out, when it first came up, 
And it started in Alabama where a judge ruled that you couldn't do IVF and all clinics in, all over Alabama was going to shut down, were going to be shut down. And I wasn't an expert on IVF, but I have common sense. You know, we're the party of common sense. Yeah. Right? What's more common sense than letting a woman die because you won't give her an abortion because you don't want to kill a life? So you'll kill two instead. Who, why save one life when you can kill two? Common sense right there, baby. Good job. Good job, pro-lifers. And some women called me, and actually Katie Britt called me, the senator from Alabama, who's really a young, good politician, smart, great husband, who was a football player, great family. She called me up. She said, sir, women have come to me and almost attacked me, and they're my best friends, that the judge shut down IVF. He's a very, you know, conservative mm -hmm. judge. And he shut down IVF. And I said, let's explain it, tell me. And she told me, I said, no, it's a great thing. It's helping women have mm. babies. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know her friends were all going through IVF. It's you so know, much more common it. than people realize. Right. Yeah. Well, because it's really private, and a lot of people don't want to talk about how they are doing IVF, how they need help. Like, of course, right? Um, of course, people aren't going to be as open with their fertility issues. I mean, it's very personal. Even having a baby, even the idea of like getting pregnant, a lot of people are waiting to tell their family and friends until a few months in just to make sure, you know, that there's no possibility of the baby not making it to term. But it's a very personal issue. Yeah. Well, but they don't talk about it. You know, let's say somebody's, I mean, I understand. Yeah. Nobody, I never had big discussions. I know this. If you're a woman, and you go through, you're not going to be telling Katie Britt, and you're not going to yeah. be telling your friends, hey, I'm right. going through IVF. Right. Yeah. Some will, and some will. Well, I just agreed with Trump. Look at me. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, he's right, though. Like, you're not going to be telling people. It's very personal, you know? Yeah. But she didn't know anything about her. But that's also why in progressive bubbles, we try to talk more about our lives because people feel so alone in the world. It's why people think they're having a universal experience when they're not, or actually they are having a very common experience and they feel alone. The irony is it happens both ways. And that's why we're sort of encouraging people to talk about their struggles in a way, not so we can overshare, and not, but so we can actually say, hey, actually a lot of women are doing IVF. Actually, a lot of families are in need of abortion. Actually, a lot of families are in need of this X, Y, Z. And so you're not alone because, you know, sometimes the loudest people who speak up don't represent the majority. Sometimes they are truly the minority in a way that is hindering everyone else's success. And remember, we want to go to the people that are suffering the most in the country and lift them up because that lifts up the whole standard of the country. This idea that we keep lifting up just the top, how is that going to help? You want to uplift the whole country. Yes, people won't make it through, whether it's a choice of theirs, whatever a choice means, or they fell through the system that happens, but it's happening at such a high rate at this point, it almost feels like it's being done on purpose. It's not about it being done on purpose, but it is being done with intention. And these things are different. Purpose allows some sort of um, malicious intent to be attached to the word versus intent allows uh, an intention of what I what do I say? Good intentions. Right. The road to hell is paved with those. And let me tell you, the pe people who on Project 2025, they think they have good intentions and they probably do for everyone who thinks like them. But, hey, I don't know if they know this. This is America and we are diverse. And this country is about all of us, not just some of us. And right now, the Republican Party is really just focused on some of us. And a lot of us are going to be left out of their calculations. And that's the problem. Her friends, and they were good friends of hers, who said, they're literally attacking me. Yeah. I said, well, what is it? After about five minutes, I'm a quick study. I said, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I came out... Within 45 minutes of the decision, I came out strongly in favor on behalf of the Republican Party. Sure. And I have calls from senators saying, thank you, sir, you saved my political career. Yeah, wow. Because they might have come out, you know. Save their knew. family, too. But here's what does happen, which is really, we get calls that just the other day that this total lying politician that's running that ruined san francisco she destroyed san francisco with her very liberal policies 
And she destroyed the Gavin state of Newsom? Gavin No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but Gavin Newsom. It's I call him funny. Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom. <laughs> That's a good one. It's not funny. I've met Gavin Newsom. He's the devil himself, isn't he? Devil himself, I swear. Um, you know what's funny about Project 2025 is they talked about eliminating the, uh, par the Department of Education, which, by the way, is the other thing. You remember how I said the other day, conservatives are always trying to reinvent the wheel. They're doing that with everything like education. And I'm like, there's a reason why America, I think it was early 1900s, had to make high school mandatory. Because you're not lifting up the bottom of the population. Like you have to lift up the least educated to be at least a standard of educated. You're moving up the standard of the country. And this is, look, as a, as a kid who was homeschooled till she was 15, I'm telling you right now, my parents were not qualified to homeschool me. Did they send me to other people to homeschool me? Yes, they were also not qualified. Like the idea of qualification is such an interesting idea in this country, but we need to have a standard so we can rely on people to know or to have a standard of knowing, of understanding, right? So the irony of Project 2025 is with the best intentions, they are going to keep America so fucking stupid, like so fucking stupid. And it's interesting because now that I'm in uh, Croatia, one of the things that comes up in conversation a lot is sort of like basic knowledge stuff. And to be honest with you, like I don't have a lot of that basic knowledge stuff that Europeans expect people to have. So I'll get quizzed by my partner and his friends. And they're like, do you know this? Do you know this? Do you know this? And I'm like, no. And like, the truth is, is that I was homeschooled till I was 15. So a lot of the stuff you might've learned in elementary school, I either learned on my own later, or I've read like, I've read thousands of books. That doesn't mean I learned any of the standard understanding I graduated with a high school diploma. I got all my credits. I passed high school. I went to public high school. I passed my classes. It's not like I was getting Fs. You know what I mean? Like I passed my classes. My first year in public school, I really struggled in English and she did fail me my first semester, but jokes on her. I read The Godfather that summer. Great summer school. Great experience. Then I came back and got a harder teacher on campus and passed no problem. It's not that I'm stupid. It's just that the thing that makes people have a standard of understanding that, you know, kind of says like, oh, you know things. It's not that you know anything, but you know a little bit enough to kind of move a standard of like a basic standard of existence. So it's not like Europeans are super smart or something or Americans are super dumb. It's about those little like those little tidbits of knowledge that move you from one to the next. That's what you're building off. You have a basis and then you go like this and you go like this and you go like this. Right. That's what it is. It's you're, you're missing the fundamental like basis to get to the next level. That's why college is a built off of your previous education. That's why you go from one to the next to the next. And I feel like conservatives like don't understand that because they live in this fantasy land where everyone just went to trade school and they figured it out. But I genuinely think like homeschooling from a parent who isn't educated is a bad idea homeschooling because your kid is disabled, unique, autistic, um, queer, minority and you are educated and you have the resources to give them fantastic or if you want to do independent study which i also did towards the end of my high school this is so funny i homeschooled for 15 years went to public school for a few years and my last like semester or whatever i ended up doing independent study through my public high school so and it was like somewhat similar to when i was homeschooled but not and it worked like it was fine if you want to do independent study, that's fine. Cause I was bullied out of high school and I just, I couldn't go to school anymore. It was just like too much pressure. So like I was independently studied. It was fine. As long as there's a standard requirement of knowledge for your kid to graduate. And then there's like an understanding of how to move their career forward. Now, do I think most people who are working like minimum wage nine to fives need to have a certain level of education just enough to get through the job, but there's still a standard. It doesn't have to be college level, but there is a standard. And we just want to make sure adults are in that standard so we can rely on them. Because what's happening in a lot of places is parents are getting their kids passed because they don't want to deal with their kids being behind. And then those kids go to a trade school or go to a college and they can't keep up because they were pushed through high school without actually being qualified. And then the parents are now suing the high schools. Like, why'd you pass my kid if they weren't qualified? Because if you don't pass your kid, then they get mad and they want to sue the school. It's a, we have to work together to get our kids prepared to be adults. That's what your job is as a parent. So send them to the right schools, get them the right information and move things forward, right?
So again, I feel like people are missing the point of getting your kids up to a standard. And if you are homeschooling your kid without an education, you are too stupid to do it. And until you admit that, it is going to be what it is. Now, you might be the exception. And if you are the exception, I love that for you. But you being the exception does not mean that all those kids whose parents aren't, aren't going to suffer even more so. So you make a decision. If you being the exception should now be everybody's like right to pretend that they are too, because they're not. I get a call and they say uh, that she, Kamala, said that I'm against IVF, okay? That I'm against it. They know it's untrue. But all of the lies, that they, in so way. many different yeah. things, uh, the uh, bloodbath, that was about the auto industry, but the word is a tough word. China's going to take all our auto business if we go all electric and all this stuff. And yeah. the head of the union, I said, is a fool. He sold the union down. I'm doing great with it. You notice where the Teamsters like me and the, they all like me. The workers like yeah. me because I'm going to. It seems to be that way. Yeah, yeah, it seems yeah. to be. Even, even union, unions that have never been with a Republican before are endorsing me. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. The Teamsters voted 61% in favor of Trump. Think wow. of that. The, uh, I'll tell you, the FBI would be in favor. Almost everybody, I think almost everybody would be in favor. Yeah. But they lie and they say, and they know it's a lie. Uh, Charlottesville, the Charlottesville sta statement was perfect. If they take the next sentence that I gave, I made a statement on it. Hmm. It was a perfect statement. And if you take, but they never take the next. Is he talking about when he said, uh, there's good people on both sides, Kamala, Kamala Harris, both sides. <laughs> like, is he, what is he talking about? The Charlottesville? Was he, is that what he's talking about? Good people on both sides. <laughs> Next sentence, they cut it off. And then there's no Even the other one, uh, patriot, peacefully and patriotically. In my speech. Ah, uh, January 6th. Okay, I get it. Yeah. I talked about peacefully and patriotically. They <sighs> never show that. Mm. They never talk about it. To show you how, di how dishonest they are, the J6 committee, I call it the unselect, you know, they call it the select committee. I call it the unselect committee of political acts and Wow, and amazing. Thugs. They never talk about my speech yeah. because it was a good speech. It was a you know, patriotic speech. Are you numb to this now or no, I does never it get still bother you? No, I, it bothers me. Yeah. I'll tell you what bothers <laughs> He's, he's, it bothers, it hurts my feelings. It really hurts my feelings, honestly. I cried Malalia's tits. Malalia's tits makes, it makes me cry. Others <laughs> me, uh, Kamala the other day said, he is against IVF. And everybody knows that that's false. Yeah. When I came out, people were a little surprised, actually, because, you know, in theory, but I came out strongly in favor of IVF. She has an add-on that I'm against IVF. Yeah. Hmm. She knows it's untrue. She has an add-on that bloodbath, bloodbath means like blood, and that's yeah. not what I was talking about, the automobile industry. It's yeah. going to be a bloodbath in the automobile. We're going to lose all our business. Yeah. That's what it's referring to. No, no, chat, no, no. Chat says, I see a huge difference in people who are homeschooled. Brittany is a great example of self-confidence and creativity that was fostered by trusting your caretakers and being schooled by people. No, no, no. <laughs> You already know. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Do not use me as an example of a good reason to homeschool your kids. No, no. <laughs> no, no. No, no. <laughs> I think that's so sweet, but that's my personality, girl. I would have messed my personality you're looking at. That's not because I was homeschooled. Look, if you go through a bad school district, you're going to get effed over. If you get homeschooled by your parents, you're going to get effed over if they're not educated because both have the same problem. If your school isn't there to educate you and your parents aren't there to educate you, what do you end up having? Like, just a reminder that the reason I think the moon is the planet is because I was homeschooled. It's not good that I was homeschooled. The fact that I don't know the difference is because I never learned it in school. Because that teaching you get in elementary school, I didn't learn I didn't learn that. So that's why I joke like the moon is a planet because like I literally just like it's all the same to my brain because I didn't learn the difference as a child. And that was because I was homeschooled because I didn't have. OK. So at the end of the day, like I don't know things like basic things that like children learn by doing the planet projects or like I have to learn that on my own. The things people take for granted that they just know like, I didn't get that normal standardized schooling. 
Like I didn't get that standardized schooling. So now I have to go back and watch, are you smarter than a fifth grader? So I can figure out what I'm supposed to know from as a fifth grader. And I don't think it's cute. I mean, I think it's kind of funny, but like, I <laughs> like, no, you know, now look, not some kids really benefit from homeschooling and some people really learn because their parents are educated or because they can go to classes outside that school. I'm not anti-homeschooling. I'm anti being educated by a person that's one, not invested in you learning things, but two, the person who doesn't even know it themselves. Okay. The point is, I think it's bullshit that parents think they're smarter than teachers who have to go to college and get actually, you know, schooling for to be teachers. Now, of course, not every state has that requirement. Like California and New York have a much higher standard and requirement of their teachers than like middle America. So even Americans aren't even being taught at the same standard. And that's a big part of the problem, right? A huge part of the problem is like, we're not educating our kids at a specific standard. And I'm telling you right now, we should be teaching that. But again, if you're reinventing the wheel, if you're trying to teach children in schools, like guys, the fact that adult conservatives are afraid of vaccines, they're afraid of the school system, that they literally think they figured out how the world works and they can't even figure out how to get a job or maintain any kind of stability in this country. You don't know what's going on. One of the testaments to whether or not you have figured out how to survive is whether or not you can figure out how to survive. Uh, do you know how to do the basics? Because if, for somebody who can't do the basics, you sure pretend you know a lot about everything else. And that's interesting. Again, if you're unique and you need unique schooling, I'm okay with this, but I still think there needs to be a standard. And again, the fact that people are moving away from that standard is bullshit. Okay, parents who are homeschooling their kids and they're keeping up with the standard, I'm about it. But if you're not keeping up with the standard, then you're raising a whole group of adults that are learning a completely different history about the world. It, like non-facts about science, you're learning the wrong information. If we're all gonna learn the wrong information, we should learn it together. <laughs> and then recontextualize reality. But you do you. You have McDonald's. She lied about McDonald's. She lied about many things. Uh, and she's a liar. Oh my God, he's talking about the fact that Kamala Harris said she worked at McDonald's and he's like, she never worked at McDonald's. Bro, everybody's worked a nine to five, relax. Everyone's worked a minimum wage, okay? Chat says using the moon as a planet and using yourself as an example is not a good point. You are excelling majorly. I am not excelling because I was homeschooled. I am excelling regardless of the fact that I was homeschooled because I wanted to be better than the way that I was raised. I'm doing it despite the fact that I was homeschooled, not because of it. I suffered growing up as a young person. It was so hard to do school and it was so much harder because I was homeschooled. Chat says, what about your siblings and they're failing because of homeschooling? Um, most of my siblings went to public school. So nice try. My youngest brother didn't even homeschool once. All my younger brothers were in school in elementary. So remember that my mom maybe, maybe started off homeschooling all of her kids, but a majority of my siblings went to public school in elementary. Only three of us started off in high school. The rest had elementary. One of them didn't even homeschool once. How many kids? I have 10 kids in my family. I'm one of 10. So just like a reminder. Kind of a rule. When they know it's a lie, you can't do a commercial on it. But this is a thing that's going to end in 29 days so they can say what they want. I have a hard time doing it to them mm -hmm. because I'm basically, you know, I'm basically a truthful person. But and, and <laughs> frankly, <laughs> no. Did he just laugh at Trump saying tr I'm a truthful person? <laughs> but and, and <laughs> frankly, <laughs> no, but frankly, <laughs> no, but frankly. <laughs> Like, uh, she's given me so much ammunition. I don't really have to. I mean, okay, she's a radical it. left lunatic who will destroy our nation yeah. other than that. But she, she will destroy our nation. So when you take a look at it. I can't believe he didn't get up and walk away. He has his feelings hurt so often. Um, and I think that, you know, just getting back to your original thought on the abortion, having it back in the States, the people are now voting on it. And we're going to put an end to a 52-year ordeal. This has been going on for 52 years. Yeah, It's back with the states, and it's a vote of the people. Yeah, And that's where everybody wanted it to be. And I think that issue is largely quelled because of uh, that. You've said, like, Arizona, you think, went a little bit too far. If you feel a state goes a little bit too far, will you use a little influence and say, hey, maybe oh, Rubin says we can make exceptions? I would. Oh, no, I won't back it. I, I won't back okay. it. I think okay. you... I, I think, think that's important for moderates to hear. That's yeah, why I want no, to give you no, that opportunity to say so. No, some yeah. states say no way to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're all changing mm -hmm. because the people in the state won't stand for that. There are some states that say under no circumstances, mm -hmm. you have a daughter and she's raped by the worst, most violent criminal in the country and you cannot get 
you know, her. Yeah. She, you cannot take she her. She has to live with and, that for the rest of her life. Yeah. yeah. She got to live with this. Yeah. And, you know, the uh. father is a monster. He's from an insane asylum mm -hmm. because he killed 50 people. Yeah. Oh my God. And you're going to have to. This is not funny. But you know what? Trump's making a good point, bro. He's making a very pro-choice argument I'm here for. That baby. Yeah. And I can't believe. You have believe, to have empathy for that. No, yeah, no. I can't to, believe yeah. that uh, people are forced to do that. Yes. And you have a tiny, you know, right now. It's yeah. It, was, it used to be a much bigger segment. Yeah. Uh, no, I think I've done a good job in a lot of ways because I've convinced people that you just can't do that. No, that's important. It's always been complex. It's always been tough. But we've come a long way with that issue. But just in a nutshell bringing it back to the states mm -hmm. and giving a vote of the people is where they wanted it 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. And then they got a little complex. They talked about the length and the, you know, the number yeah. of but with protections, yeah. with protections for women. Uh, yeah. and to me, you have to Ronald Reagan a long time ago was with the same three protections. Yeah. He said he wanted, you know, for rape, yeah. incest mm -hmm. and the life of the mother. And mm -hmm. that was, Long time ago. Okay, yeah. you have a very busy day. Before you go, uh, what would you like your legacy to be? Oh. And what do you think it will be? So. And thank you very much for taking. Two the time. very different questions, actually. I think, but. Um, oh, that's, what would you like it to be? I took over a country that was very troubled. This country was broken up and and uh, tremendous dissension, uh, and Barack Obama started it. Oh, brilliant. And. If you take a look, it was very, very badly broken. And I think now with with Biden, mm -hmm. you know, let's forget her for a second, but with Biden and her, mm -hmm. part of it, big part of it, but with Biden, there's tremendous dissension. The country is a broken up mess. Mm -hmm. um, and it's broken in a lot of ways. But what I would like my legacy to be is the same as uh, the term MAGA, make America great again. I'm going to make this country great again. It's not a great country yeah. right now. It's loaded it's up. It's always a great country. It's a great country. See, that's it's always a great country. Okay, but I, I say it, it has the potential, and it was a great country. Mm -hmm. I think now there's so much. Was it only a great country when he was in office? Is that what he's saying? For those four years he was in office, that's the only time it was a great country? Much hatred, and there's so much dissension. I think when you have people that can't walk down Fifth Avenue, when you have people that can't walk down a street, it ceases to be- We can always be well, better. Mm -hmm. We can always be better. Yeah, but you can't blindfold yourself to no, say- No, I'm, I'm honest you know, about it, but to me, I'm really proud of America because I think that I don't, I think I can be the best version of myself here. You know, I think that Donald Trump can only happen in America. Your life, what has happened to you, this is an American story. Yeah. My mom's life is an American story. Like my mom's from Scotland. She comes here and has all the success. And she's so grateful of what America is. That doesn't mean that we can't make it better. I like the idea of making it better every single time, fixing these things when there's leaks in the ship. But the idea of America and becoming the greatest version of yourself is something I'll always be proud of. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I, so like I when, understand yeah. what you're saying. When, when I was president, we had no wars in the whole world because of me. I stopped a lot of wars from him. That makes me proud. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's just not happening now. That, right now, people are dying in Ukraine yeah. because we had an incompetent president. If we had a president that knew what the hell he was doing, Ukraine would have never happened. Israel would have never happened. Yeah. All those people that are dying on both sides, yeah. that would have never happened. On both sides. Uh, Afghanistan, people falling off airplanes from three, uh, think of that, yeah. from 3,500 feet above the ground, yeah. three times the height of the Empire State Building, off the side of the airplane. Yeah. Um, all of this horrible stuff would have never happened. Inflation would have never happened because that was caused by energy and yeah. the stupid energy. Yeah, yeah. So, look, we love our country, yeah. and it's had moments of greatness, but it's. I think it's. A, I think it's a very. It's a. De, it's a declining. It's so sad what's happened. We're a nation in decline, hmm. and we can't. Wait, there's a joke here somewhere. We're a nation in decline. Decline. All the way to your mom's house. <laughs> There's something here. There's a joke here somewhere. Let it be declined. I'll give you an example. We're going to lose our monetary base very soon because, you know. Yo, the dollar is 
hella weak right now and my conversion rate is shit. My money is not going a long way here in Europe right now. Let me tell you, every time I convert my money, the dollar is weak as F right now, bro. It is not good. RL with the super chat, thank you so much, says, I think I feel bad for Trump. He does no self-reflection. If you tell him or his base you're amazing, he won't ask, am I really amazing? True. I mean, I think Trump is infamous for being quoted as never asking God for forgiveness, right? Like that's Trump's infamous quote. That's why a lot of Christians came out against Trump because he's never asked God for forgiveness. He's like, no, like, mm. you know, so it's kind of interesting sort of that he uh, is this type of person. That's why people call him a narcissist, right? I think regardless of what is going on in his brain, he is having a relationship with himself. But to be fair, I mean, think about the way that he was raised and the bubble he grew up in and, you know, the kind of bubble he was in really gave him this narrative around it really gave him this narrative around himself and what it means to be trump and so i think he just continues to think very highly of himself regardless of what happens and that's working for him i mean it got him all the way to the united states uh presidency so you know it is one of those things i do in a philosophical sense always try to not pity people but to let go of the attachment that their journey wasn't just the way that it was supposed to go. Like nobody could have been Trump except Trump because nobody is Trump except Trump. Trump is a very specific kind of person. And so I don't think it's our job to feel bad for anybody. I think it's our job to say like, this is his journey as much as it any is anybody else's. Like nobody's ever going to be your, you and no one's ever going to be him. But what a great, great news. You don't have to be Trump. You know, because I don't want to be Trump. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's interesting. He definitely is like a very specific type of introspective. It's very limited, which is so interesting because he really did get this far. So he has to be smart in some aspects. But yeah, I don't think he ever does doubt himself. But maybe that's his strength, ir ironically. You know what I mean? Okay, also, don't make fun of my super chatter. That was a perfectly decent super chat to leave. What do you mean, chat? Did you self-assess before posting this comment because it was pretty stupid? I'll block you. Don't be a That was a perfectly decent comment. Are you too stupid to understand it? Is that your problem? Don't call my super chatter stupid when you're an idiot and don't even understand the super chat. What are you, a Trump voter? Countries are going off the dollar. I'm going to get them back on the dollar. I'm going to hmm. say, you got to go back on the... You're not going to do any business with the inner. You got to hmm. do it. Um... But I do think this, uh, where I really agree with you, we have tremendous potential. Yeah. And I say it, make America great again. Yeah. And I just make want- Make America gay again? That's what I heard. I think that's what he said, right? Make America gay again. Tops, bottoms, switches, power bottoms. Make America super duper gay again. Let's go. I, I would like to have it. I used to have something. I was going to use it, and I didn't use it because the country started to do badly. CAG. Not MAGA, CAG. What? I never liked the <laughs> word CAG, but it was CAG. Keep America. America Great. You like that? Better. I like this. CAG. But see, CAG? I, keep I couldn't oh, use cab. it. <laughs> keep America Great. What? Because we had so many problems. Yeah. So I want to say it also sounds it, like that other word. It doesn't work as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's never going to be another MAGA. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I came up with a phrase that just turned out to be yeah. a MAGA. Yeah. No, it's the greatest movement, political movement in the history of our country. Yeah. And these are people that really love our country and they yeah. want it to be great. And we're going to make it great again. That, that was what I would like to do is make this country so great better than what you're even thinking and you are that. i mean i i love your attitude because i, love I that. think that's the way you should be now kiss <laughs> look at the way andrew wants to make out with him right now bro andrew's like make out with me bro um, i think that's yeah. sorry there's one thing i want to give you Ooh, let's go are we about to say something spicy a rumor i'd like to give you a chance to dispel what? and then one question if you have time i'd like to ask selfishly rumor the far left i think okay hold up before he goes in RL with the super chat. I'm not saying he should be president. Vote blue. No, for sure. I didn't even hear that, bro. Okay. Like in your original super chat, I didn't even hear you being pro-Trump. You, I thought you were making very humanitarian based assessment. Like it's, don't feel pity for stupid people, but don't, don't feel pity for anybody, especially smart people. Don't feel pity for people except that they are who they are, you know? says this thing that, oh, if Donald Trump wins, he's never going to cede power. Then they have some clip of you saying, just vote for me one time. You won't have to vote oh. again. I don't believe this. Oh, good 
question, bro. Is it true? I want to give you a chance to you're publicly right. say that's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you can publicly yeah, speak to any right. moderates well, out so, there. So what I said, yeah, uh, Christians tend to vote at a very low percentage for mm. some reason. Mm -hmm. And so do. Wait, what? Say that's nonsense? Yeah. yeah. Just so you can publicly yeah, speak to any right. moderates well, out so, there. So what I said, yeah, uh, Christians tend to vote at a very low percentage for mm. some reason. Mm -hmm. And so do gun owners. Would you believe it? The NRA gun owners yeah. tend not to vote. Maybe it's a rebellious thing. I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. I said, look, our country's in big trouble, really big trouble with mm -hmm. the border, with all the problems. We can solve the problem. But vote this one time. After that, we're not going to need it to this is the most important election yeah. in the history of our country vote because if you don't vote for him he's gonna have to go to prison so please vote for trump guys so he doesn't go to prison because a president doesn't serve his time and he's probably gonna die in the white house because he's old which means he can die the president instead of a, a criminal in prison so please republicans vote trump one last time so he doesn't have to serve his prison sentence that he rightfully deserves because he committed crimes. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. P. Diddy's going to be my roommate and you know how he is. <laughs> I can't. No, Diddy. I don't want baby oil. I don't want you. I never even liked you. I only said I did. <laughs> like He's just afraid. He's afraid of going to prison, bro. For this most important election. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't want to vote, we're going to have elections, but you don't have to vote because it's going to go along swimmingly. Okay. That's how I we, interpreted yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I just want to give you the chance. Okay, by the way, that's how I heard it when I first heard it. And my partner was like, man, you are so optimistic. I was like, well, he didn't. That's what I think. I honestly don't think Trump wouldn't give up power when his time is done. I think he'd throw a bitch fit, though. And I know a lot of people feel like Trump would stay in office if he could. I don't know. I think he's trying to avoid prison, which I think Trump is willing to do whatever it takes to avoid prison. And I think then that, that would make him want to stay president. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not saying that he wants to stay president. I think he wants to stay out of prison. And I think that that's the thing that is how my brain thinks that's different. But, you know. That's how yeah. they interpret yes. it too. Yes. They know what you're saying. You gotta vote this yeah. time because we don't have, we can't wait four years because you know what? In another four years, like we've just had with this clown that's a president, that's mm -hmm. just a clown, a foolish man. Don't forget, he was a stupid man 25 years ago. He was never a smart man. He's run many times. He was, isn't it amazing? He's run many times and he gets it when he's in serious decline, okay? okay? Is Alex and Mark, are they the liberals on this this thing because like i don't i know alex isn't voting trump alex is the black guy right alex is anti-trump as far as i know is mark anti-trump or is mark voting for trump i don't know but anyway so everybody knows that okay. and that's what i meant by okay. it yeah it means we got to fix it yeah and then it's going to work beautifully. Okay. It's going to run beautiful. We're going to have elections every two years and every four yeah. years. It's going to be great. I just want to give you a chance to say that. And, and, and if I could ask one question. Uh, I th everybody I speak to, every race, creed, whatever, they don't just like you. They love you. And I talk to people on both sides about your policies. And a lot of people that like your policies, the China tariff that's still in place right now is an example of policy that people yeah. love. I think sometimes what we love about you as comedians is you shoot from the hip. But then the, that gets twisted into this rhetoric yeah. that adds mm. gasoline onto everything. So mm. the one thing I would like, as I think a moderate person, is maybe if you get elected, would you be a little bit more mindful of how powerful your words are for better and for worse? I will. And I'm going to think of you every time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That's funny, though. <laughs> you know, Trump is fast, bro. He's fast. But so is Biden. You know, as much as like people make fun of Biden for being slow, he's quick, bro. He's just old, but like his humor is fast when people ask him questions. That was funny. Oh, I might actually vote. <laughs> I'm really of you. No, no, it's true. I mean, I understand that. Uh, sometimes uh, they say, oh, could you be a little bit more? But you're doing a lot of things yeah. and you're solving a lot of problems. Yeah. I stopped wars that nobody will ever know about, they won't mm -hmm. write about, but countries that were fighting each other and didn't affect us much, but they did business with us. I called up two countries that have fought themselves, fought for. Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, stop fucking, or no, wait, start fucking, stop fighting, Sodom and Gomorrah, stop it. Of years, <laughs> killing each other for years. And I said, you guys are it's at so it again. Funny. I heard it was going to start up. 
I stopped it when I first came in. And I said, listen, here's the story. If you go to war with each other, I, I could give you the details, but I don't even want to bother because it's nice now. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not going to do any more business with the United States. I'm going to cut you off 100%. Mm -hmm. And if you do get through, I'm going to charge you 200% tariffs. You won't be able to survive. So work it out. Work mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a country. Work it out. I'm going to take away your allowance. Work it out. Or no more spankies for you. That's split. That's and then they Trump thinks he loves himself, bro, so much. Like, but not in like the therapy way. It is kind of amazing to see him talk. Like, there's something about Trump that is okay. This is I'm gonna uh, equate it to this, but you know how people feel like they can trust people who cuss more because it feels more honest. That's how Trump feels. He is the f word. He is. He is. He is that feeling humans get when they can trust somebody who cusses because it feels like Trump is like honest, even though he's not. And even though people who cuss are not more honest, it sends an illusion to our brain that convinces us, oh, I can trust this person. They say it how it is. You want me to say it how it is? You're too stupid to have a kid. You're not qualified. Your kid's going to come out disabled for no reason. You don't have the money to take care of them. America's too goddamn stupid to procreate. And so is 99% of the world. How does that feel? Pretty shitty. You don't want to hear people tell it how it is. You want to hear people tell you what you want to hear. You're great. You're smart. You're going to make a great parent. You're going to take care of it no matter what happens. You're amazing. You can make it through. You should have a baby. You'd be a great mom. Trump doesn't say it how it is. He says what you want to hear, just like everybody else. He just packages it in a way that tells you or convinces you like he's honest. I saved thousands of lives, hundreds of thousands of Don't lives. Even they, they've been killing each other for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. for centuries. Mm -hmm. And I saved thousands of lives. And nobody writes about it. Many people don't even. He acts like this is unique to him, though. I think that's what's so interesting is why does he think this is unique to him? It's like he wants credit for something like every president does. Like, this isn't unique to you, dude. RL with another super chat. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for joining members. Thank you for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Please like the stream. Please subscribe so we can get to 100,000 subscribers just for funsies, just because we can, guys. RL says, that's why the uneducated love him. They equate mean to honest. They probably think being nice is fake, which is true in some cases, but not standard. I agree. I think niceness is a form of fakeness, but I think that's why kindness is key. And I think everyone can be kind, whether you're an educator or not. It doesn't take an education to be kind. But it does take an uneducated person to convince themselves that Trump is a worthy president. Unless they say out loud, I know he's a fool, but I need him to do this thing for me I really want. It's one thing to be a one-issue voter and say, like, look, Trump is the worst, but if I vote for him, he's going to give me X, Y, Z. Okay. Did you hear what Russia just did? Russia has a new program specifically targeted towards Americans and other Western countries that are sick of the progressives and who want traditional values to be the focus. And they're allowing a program to allow these people to move to Russia and become Russian, basically. They don't have to learn the language. There's not going to be a language test. And they want them to be there as long as they adhere to Russian um, cultural standards, as long as they agree to be like Russian, basically. And I think that's so interesting. And the comments are so funny. They're like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Have fun. Send, you know, show this ad on Fox News. Show this ad everywhere. Like people are making me die where they're like, put this on social, social truth. What's that conservative Twitter called? They're like, put this on the internet. We love this. Put this announcement in every church. Look, you do you. But if you genuinely want to move to Russia to uphold traditional values, this is going to be the ectopic pregnancy all over again, where you go to Russia because you think they're going to uphold your traditional values. You're going to be like that eptop, ep mother who had an ectopic pregnancy who voted for the pro-life uh, policies, only to realize like, oh, this isn't for your benefit. They convince you it's for your benefit. It's not. It's not for your benefit. But of course it's a trap. Of course it's stupid. Of course Russia is trying to move this propaganda forward. Like, at the end of the day, if you genuinely think Russia is more free than America under progressive, like, presidents, you've absolutely lost the plot. It's so stupid. And you know what? I highly doubt most, like, conservatives are ever going to fall for this. It would be interesting. Did you hear about the Canadian family that moved to Russia? 
thinking they'd be more free. And then they thought they had a First Amendment right, even though that's an American thing. And they absolutely did not. I think they were Canadian. People say they were American, but I swear I thought they were Canadian. But you know the story? They said something anti-Putin, like, oh, Russia wasn't as great as they thought. And boom, in trouble. And look, my heart, seek, to be honest with you, I think it's disgusting when any human is tortured unnecessarily. And Russia does torture people. There are like so many Americans, so many Russians in prison right now. There is a woman who donated like $32 to Ukraine and she is in prison right now. It's, it's devastatingly sad. It is, if I'm going to be real, like I can make a joke, but if I'm going to be real, it is devastatingly sad when human beings don't have enough agency or introspection, extrospection to really think about who they're giving their power over to. It's, it's really sad. And it is just what it means to be a person. Being a person means making decisions that other people will learn from. Please don't go to Russia. And I've gotten things for our country that nobody else, I really think nobody else could have done. But I enjoy doing it for our country. And, and you know, uh, just to get back to where you originally started, I want to make America great again. I want to make it so great that people won't question it, so that people can say what you just said, yeah. that, no, no, it's great. I don't want to have a question. Why should I or anybody else say, no, it's not great anymore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that position. I think... I want to make it so that when you ask a question like that, we can say, well, it's a great, great yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. We love our country, but we can do a couple of little things. I think we need that. I'll and put that in yeah. our, uh, we want to put that in love our that. basket. I, I love, love that. that. And uh, well, first of all, thank you so much. This is an honor. I, 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 I would be remiss to not. Okay, boring. Listen, first of all, this is a good example of the difference between men and women and how we're separating. Women are voting for Kamala. Boys are voting for Trump. If the boys get out to vote, right? It shows even in the podcast world. Call her daddy, Pro Harris, flagrant, Trump. It's interesting. Like, it is kind of interesting, right? Now, obviously, I've already voted. I voted for Kamala Harris. I know you guys are probably going to vote for Kamala Harris. But also, regardless of who you vote for, just make sure it coincides with your values. And make sure you have a conversation about that and how you feel about that. Right? How you feel about knowing that this is where you're putting your kind of your name behind. Because look, it's... It's really about choosing the one who's going to harm reduce because at the end of the day, there's still going to be harm that's going to be done. Every country on this planet causes a level of harm to somebody else. The question is, which one's causing the least amount of harm and how does that work out? Because that's really what it is. There's no magical planet on the earth. There's no magical space. There's no perfect country. There's nothing. There's only humans and humans are what they are everywhere, universally, throughout the whole globe. It doesn't matter if you're in some remote village that's never seen an airplane or if you're in the most high-tech country, you got problems. So how do you bring down the level of problem? I think Trump will make it worse for people. I think conservatives are limited in their way of thinking. They are just as valuable in terms of life as anybody else. But I think that their policies and belief systems are limiting for most people on the planet. And I think, especially in America, it'd be best to vote for somebody who gives everybody options conservative or progressive, right? RL with another super chat. Thank you so much for supporting the content. What do you guys think? Any thoughts on this? Any last minute thoughts? Anything else we should cover in regards to it? So weird. I wonder how many men are really going to go out and vote though. You know what I mean? Because that's going to be the most interesting is I am curious if they'll get out and vote. I feel like they're going to be too lazy. Like I think they're going to be too lazy, which is what I'm hoping for. I'm kind of hoping a lot of them are just cranky, but they're too lazy to go. They're too lazy to even look up their polling location. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I'm kind of hoping that they're too lazy to even go to their polling location because they have to register to vote before the deadline. Then they actually have to show up or they have to send in their ballot early. Like, I'm kind of hoping, you know, I'm kind of hoping that they're too lazy to do anything, which also is why women aren't marrying you. Because no gold star for the basics. This is what people don't understand. Like, no gold star for the basics, but not everyone is required to do the same amount of basics, even though everyone should be doing the same amount of basics in a sense, like surviving, right? So, it, yeah, it will be interesting to see if these men can even get off the couch to vote. If, since a majority of eligible voters, like, aren't voting anyways to begin with. I guess we'll see what happens. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense
I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun,